So hello everybody. So I'm, I'm the last speaker, so I expect that everyone is not so tired. Uh, my name is Tin Viet Nguyen, and I'm going to present a paper on work with Professor Francois Bachelet as Indira Ernest. The title is the On the Spatial Modeling of Wireless Network by Random Packing Models. So this is uh, the second talk today about stochastic geometry. Yes. So the DLL at the top will be as follows. First, I will begin with some source introduction. Then I will define the model concretely. In these two sections, I get all the mathematical results. Then I will put these results into some demonstration in some simple wireless network analysis problem. And after that, this is the conclusion. So the introduction. This is my favorite begin of any talk. This is a snapshot of the Poisson point process. Okay, these are points. So what is point process? Point process are points that scatter randomly all over the, the plane. And Poisson point process are point process that have two particular property. The first one is that you take any area A. The number of points in that area is a Poisson random variable. And the second <coughs> property is that condition on the, the, on the number of the points in that area, the position of each point is independent with each other. These two properties allow us to have the, very, the following very useful result. That if you, step, if you let lambda to be the intensity measure of the, of the point process, that is a way to say that for any particular uh, area A, lambda A is the expect value of number of points inside that area. Then if you have a product like this, you take the product of the function B for take the product on over all the points in the point process, and you take the expect value of this product, this can be computed at the exponential upper integration at the one minus v x with respect to the with the measure lambda, and this is a very very useful result that make possible the favorite model for all the work using stochastic geometry in uh, to analyze the wireless network. As you see with the with the first talk uh, of matches, so this. This result allows us to derive flows from expression for many, many uh, performance metrics of the network. And from that flows from expression, we can do numerical evaluation, we can do optimization, we can do a lot of things. But now, let's stop and ask ourselves a question. Is this model is always valid for Take for, for, for a wireless network? The answer is not always. For example, we consider here the CSMA wireless network. First, we observe that the cluster nodes in a network tend to generate excessive interference to each other. And this is bad, and we don't want them to, to transmit at the same time. And one way to achieve this is to use carrier sensing multiple access, or CSMA for short. In CSMA, node that have a packet to transmit <coughs> doesn't transmit right away, but it listens for some time. The purpose of this is to detect ongoing transmission. If during that time it detects, okay, someone is talking near me, then it has to reschedule its transmission for, for a random period of time later. So, in this, in this context, Poisson is not a good assumption. Okay, you, we return to my favorite. Here we have cluster node. Here we have cluster. In fact, for Poisson point process, this is very, very useful that, very, very usually that we, we have, can have cluster node. And this is not the case in CSMA. 
So which model can be used here? The, in previous work, people proposed matter model. But in this paper, we propose to you the random sequential absorption model, or RSA for short. The details, the definition will be provided later, so don't worry. All we need to know is that both models are a thinning of a Poisson process. So for example, if we take this Poisson process, these two models are a subset of point of this process. And both models have some exclusion-based uh, definition that is between any two points in the model, we should have some, some kind of um, uh, proportion force that just force them to, to be far away from each other. And a physical, physical uh, meaning for this model is that the Poisson process here represents all the nodes in the network. Why the model, that means the mat, either the matter or the RSA model, represent the nodes who actually transmit its packet. Is that the node that, that doesn't listen to, that, that doesn't detect that, uh, any <coughs> nearby transmission? So here, here we, we have a snapshot of the matter and the RSA model. And as you can see, that between any two points, there are some kind of uh, minimum distance between any two points. And we don't have cluster. Here, the matter <coughs> point is represented by a square. And the RSA point is represented by an X. You can see that as every point, at, at, at every square, you have an X. And there are three X here, here, and here. That the, that do not have any square. So the message is that the matter model always has least point than the RSA model. Uh, how did you obtain this process from your favorite slide, first one? You obtained yes, this one. This from thing. this you derived the second one? Uh, yes, from, from the part, so we, we, we have some thinning and we obtain, obtain the matter and the RSA model. And, but the definition will be provide later. Okay. Now I just want to show you some demonstration. Here is uh, to, to, to show the point that the matter model is a thinning of Poisson. Here, the, 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 more circle, the small circle here are the, the Poisson point. And the one here that has the square are the matter point. So every square has a, a circle. And the same thing for RSA. Now, so far so good. Now we need, now we, we, we give you, now I give you the concrete definition of the models that we are dealing with here. The ingredient that we gonna need is first a uh, Poisson front process, a homogeneous Poisson front process, which we de denote by phi lambda of intensity lambda. This is an equivalent way to say that the intensity measure of phi lambda is lambda times the Lebesgue measure. Then we equip this process with uniform RID timer max. So the, the timer of X1 is T1, the timer of X2 is T, T2. And by some abuse of mm, notation, we say that the the X1 arrive in the system at time T1. Now, we have the point, we have to decide which point that, that is uh, forbid to appear at the same time in our model. So this is defined through the random variable Cij here. So, so the meaning is that if Xi contain with, with Xj, then CIJ is, is equal to one. Some property of C is the is first is it's symmetrical. If SI contain with SJ, then the same thing. SJ contain contain with SI. The second one is more of a notation. The probability that this equal to one is equal to h of si hj, which h is some function, some fixed function. 
The property of X is that it is trans translational invariant. <laughs> you can take two, two parts, X and Y, and you move them by a fixed vector. Then the value of X at the new position is the same. And here you take two points, X, Y, and you rotate them at the same time. Then the value of X at the new point is the same as the value of X <coughs> as the old point. With these two properties, we say that the X is motional invariant. That is to say that the value of X depends on the relative position between two points, but not on the exact position of two points. So, how can we define the RSA model? Here, we take a point in a Poisson. We say that this point belongs to the RSA model if for any point x rays arrive before Xi. We have that either these two points does not contain do not contain with each other, or the, the point arrived earlier do not belong to the RSA model. To see this easier, we consider a step-by-step -step construction for the model, which is only valid if we consider our model in a in a fixed finite area. So since the area is finite, the point process phi lambda here have only a finite number of points, which is a, a, a Poisson random variable. And since the points is finite, we can sort them in the increasing order of the arriving time. So a formal way to say that is sigma is the permutation just as this happened. Then the first point is pack is in the RSA model. For any point, this point is in the RSA model. If for any other point arrive before it, we have either that two points do not contain with each other or this earlier point is not in Einstein model. And we can do the same thing for the matter. For the matter here, <coughs> everything is the same with RSI, except that in the final condition here, we have a more strict condition. We require that for any point arrived before Xi, these two points do not contain with each other. No matter what, we this point is in the RSA, is is in the matter model or not. And we can also have a step by step construction like this. So at this point, maybe you can see that why RSA model have more points than matter model because it retain point in a more strict in a strictly in in a stricter way than the RSA model. Mm -hmm. We can see it's easier by this toy example. Here we have three points in the line. The distance distance between any two points is one. And we say that two points contain with each other if the distance between them is smaller than one and a half. So I draw three circles of the radius uh, one and a half around each point. So one contain with two, two contain with three, but three do not contain with one. The matter only retain the first point. It does not retain the two because two contain with one and one arrived before. It does not retain three because two arrived before three and two contain with three. On the other hand, the RSA model retain one and three. It retain one, of course, by definition. It does not retain two because one arrived before two and one is in the RSA model. It retain three because although two re contain with three, two is not in the RSA model. So by definition, it had to retain three. So it's just a toy sample. But okay, so Matern retained least point than RSA. But why does the RSA model is a better model for the CSMA network? So we return to this picture. 
But this time we draw a circle around this mountain point. And the meaning is that if two point, if this point is inside of the circle of this point, then if a transmission is going here, then this guy here can detect it. So we can see that for any two mountain point, their the circle don't include each other. So that any two the mountain point cannot detect the transmission of each other. But here you can see that there is a point out there. It does not belong to any circle. So it cannot detect any ongoing transmission near him. But at the same time, this is not in the matter model. So the matter process so the matter model underestimates the transmitter in a CSMA network. On the other hand, for the ISA model, we don't have this situation. All the circle cover all the Poisson point. Okay, now we have defined our mathematical model. The, the problem is to compute this quantity. This is the generating functional of a, of a point process. This is the key thing to use if we want to, to use some model to analyze some kind of network. We have to compute this quantity. Here, the condition on V is that the integration of 1 minus V is smaller than infinity. This condition warranty that the generating functional is well defined and non degenerate. So, the main result is that first, the f of lambda v is continuous in lambda. It says that if you increase your, your, your phi lambda continuously, then your ISA model evolves continuously. And we can capture this evolution by the differential equation. If you take the derivative in lambda, you receive the integration here. Here, inside the integration, you have 1 minus vs times f of lambda with here. Instead of v, you have v multiplied by some factor. And this factor is the trademark of the ISA model. If you remove this factor here, you have a differential equation for a Poisson point process. But this equation is not at all useful in an engineering point of view. You cannot do optimization on this. You cannot do numerical uh, evaluation on this. So we need to use some, some, some bow to get some kind of close form formula to be useful. The lower bow comes from the simple observation that the ISA model is a subset of a Poisson mm -hmm. form process. And this is the generating functional of a Poisson. Mm -hmm. For the upper bow, you apply the lower bow to this term, and then we use the differential equation to get the upper bound. Okay. <coughs> now come the part heuristic. So in the analysis of wireless network, it is very natural to pick a typical point. <coughs> okay. Take a typical point and ask the question, what is the probability of this point satisfy this, satisfy that? So to answer that kind of question, you have to condition on the fact that the network has a node at this point and, and see what the, other, what the other point look like. And this is what we call the palm distribution. In fact, the exact result for palm distribution is although theoretically tractable, but it is way too complex to be useful. And we need to, use, to have some simple heuristic. And the heuristic is as follow. If the RSA model have a point at x, then every other point in RSA model should not contain with x. So we construct an, an alternative model as follow. So we consider again phi lambda, but for each point in phi lambda, we give another mass c, ci. The meaning is that if ci equal to 1, 
that as I contain with an imaginary point at <coughs> x. So in order to be consistent with this meaning, we need that the probability that of ci equal to one is x of x i and x, and we consider only the point in phi lambda such that it does not contain with x, and we construct the i say model in the same way as earlier, and we use this new i say model as an approximation for the old i say model under the palm distribution and we define the generating functional in the same way. And following the very same method, we can, we can get the similar result as before. The only new result is here. It say, this is the stationary property. It says that if you take a point and you condition on the fact that your network having this point, this is equivalent to, to shift this point to the center and say that, okay, my network has the center inside. And we have to shift the function V also, shift it to the center. So now it is sufficient to only consider this function. And this, this one is continuous in lambda, and this also satisfies a similar differential equation. And using, using the same method we can have the same bound. Now, it's time for some demonstration. The CSMA network can be represented by two, two things. The first is the proposed Poisson prompt process, which represents all the nodes in the network. The second thing is the, R, is the RSA model, which represents all the transmitting nodes in the network. But we have to specify the CIJ random variable. The CIJ is, is the function is the um, is equal to one if this term is larger than rho, with the meaning is in the following slide. So, eta of IJ is the rate length fading from HA to HJ, and this is exponential with parameter mu, and alpha is a pass log exponential. Exponent. So this term is the power overheard as at xi if there is an ongoing transmission as xj and two nodes contain with each other if this overheard signal is larger than rho. And from from the assumption we can compute that the probability that xij equal to one is this. Okay, so this is done. So now we have specified the node in the network. Uh, now we need, for each node, we need a receiver. We assume that there's a receiver uniformly distributed on a circle of radius R, center is SI. And for this user also, we will need a right leg fading also. And this is exponential with parameter mu also. And we will consider the SINR condition. That's we. So the SINR here we have the power of the useful signal. <coughs> here you have the noise, and here is the sum of all the overheard signal from other transmitter in the network, and this is the interference. So the receiver can reconstruct the message if the useful signal is large enough compared to the not useful signal. We will be interested in three performance metrics. The first one is the probability that you take a node and you ask what is the probability that these nodes can transmit a packet. The second one is that you take a node condition that this node can transmit its packet. What is the probability that this packet it received? And these two metrics are local metric. This concerns a typical node. We will need a global metric that, that, that gives the performance of the network as a whole. To this, we take an area D of unit area 
and we, we compute the mean number of the packets transmitted by the network, by the node of the network inside this area. So this measures how fast your network working is working. And using the result, we can express the performance metric as some express use, using the generating functional, we can give the expression for our interested uh, performance metric. And here is the, is the multiple asset probability, here is coverage probability, here we use the PAM version of the generating functional, and the global metric is just the product of these two. Okay, now we can use the bound to get uh, explicit formula for our performance metric of interest. And using this bound, you can do uh, at least numerical evalu uh, evaluation. For optimization, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit tricky because the, although this, these are closed from expression, it is still quite complicated. Okay, so I think now is the time for the conclusion. So in this paper, we give the RSA model as a valid model for the, for the wireless network using CSMA multiple asset protocol. And we show that the RSA model is at least as, as tractable as the Martin model. And this is better than the Martin model. And we need Brown and heuristic to cope with the computational complexity of the, of the method. And the last message for the one who are interested in stochastic geometry framework in wireless network analysis, this is a new tool for you in this framework. OK, so thank you very much. So we start by asking, so have you get an idea on uh, how far is modern model from the from RSA? So I've shown different one, you've shown that modern model basically underestimate the number of uh, allow receiver uh, transmitters, so it also underestimates say the spatial density of the throughput. So by by how much with respect to RSA? At maximum twenty five percent. It has been so that at, at ma in average, I mean, in ma it, I maximum mean, at, at be maximum, this means that if you have a lot, a lot of, of, of user in your network mm -hmm. and you use CSMA to thin them a little bit, okay. so in okay. very, very dense, uh, scenario yes, in very dense right. scenario, then the matter only covers 75% of the, of the plan, and there are 25% that is uncovered. Why the ISA model cover the whole the whole plan? So this is twenty five percent different. But no, it's thirty three percent because this is twenty five over seventy five. But in less than scenarios, it could be more. In less than this would be least. In in, in less than scenario, then the two model seem to be similar. For example, if you take the network with only one user, then the two. Yeah. At the same. Can you go back to the slide where you have uh, the, your preferred slide, but those with the circle around the, the nose? <laughs> yes, that is. Yes, this thing. Okay, this one. So here, one figure I do not get is uh, so say take the leftmost uh, guy. Uh, this so one is this transmitting, guy? but nobody is transmitting to nobody. So in this guy. Yeah. So okay. So, so that, that in, later on, what you do is that for that guy, you select a random receiver, yeah. and you dimension the, the transmission power accordingly. Or are you assuming that everybody's transmitting just for the fun of transmitting? Why? Well, because uh, every user is the same at the same distance from from his receiver. So it is reasonable to assume that everyone uses the same power because the. The transmission range is, a, is the same. But so you're assuming a random receiver? Yes. 
And so you have not a specific, you are not not intended communication to a specific party. You just <coughs> assume somebody will use the message and is useful for it. Yes, it's a very good question because here, because our purpose is to introduce the model. It's not uh, it's the analysis of a real CSMA network itself. This is the later stage. So we want to keep the model to be as simple as, as possible. But of course, we, we can consider some routing between the node here. So you can consider, for example, if I want to reach this guy, I can go like this, 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 for example. But this will complicate more, more and more the analysis. And we want, OK, to keep things as, uh, as simple as possible, we, we ignore that for, for this time. And we assume that, OK, there's a receiver here, and what's the probability that this receiver can get the message? Okay. Well, I understand that Martin underestimates the number of allowed transmitters. Yeah. Uh, but uh, your throughput depends on SINR interference also. So is it clear that Martin underestimates the overall throughput also? Because it under underestimates the process of transmitter. So there it will underestimate the interference. Yes. And we overestimate the coverage probability because if you have least interference, mm -hmm. you have uh, a better chance to successfully transmit your packet. <coughs> so it overestimates the real throughput? It gives more throughput? Yes. Uh, no. Because throughput is in the same time is the product yes. of the uh, of the chance that a particular node can transmit a packet, time the probability that this node can be transmitted, and on one term you have an underestimation, on the other term you have an overestimation. So it's hard to say that so far a throughput is this an underestimation or overestimation. So you didn't know how the throughput is compared, Martin versus RSA. It's hard to compare because here I say you have some kind of rigorous result. But for matter, the, 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 the study of the art <coughs> analysis is uh, an, uh, a Poissonian heuristic, and there, there's no mathematical result behind that heuristic. So it's, it's really hard to compare between the two. And what did you say this 25%? Right? RSA number of the transmitters. Just it is the number of transmitters, not yes. the performance. Yes, it's the number of transmitters. So, any more questions? Yes. Why, why, when you plug in the Poisson uh, expression on the integral, that you have a very complicated integral? Mm, when, you when you calculate the lower bound and the upper bound, the lower bound was the Poisson distribution. Yes, because here you said. And the upper bound, you said, is when you plug the Poisson distribution within the integral. Why does this bring it up? Well, because you have a minus. Here. Yes. So you have a lower bound here and you have a minus here, so you have to invert <coughs> the sense of inequality. Right. The very last question, unless there are others, it's about uh, some numerical simulation. He said that uh, the first version of RSA was pretty complex, but and so introduced an heuristic that uh, can give you some bound that you can also play with numerically. Yeah. But how far is the heuristic from RSA? So if you ever are willing then to do some mega simulation, how, how can you know how far is RSA with heuristic from RSA? Yes, uh, it's not yet in the paper, but uh, we have write another paper this is uh, more mathematically. And it seems that it's not very different. Okay. This is uh, like uh, 5% or something like that. Not very different. I guess it's a good choice. And the intuition why the heuristic works? Well, the intuition is uh, is right here. Yes, if you have a point, so a sample you you have a point here, and you say that anyone who is near to these guys is not allowed to transmit. So of course, if you have a population, then you have to eliminate the guys that is near this uh, this special guy first. And then for, for the rest, you, you do as usual. 
because this guy here has been taken care of. But of course, this is not the, the real mechanism in, in the model. Okay, so. So, just one point like this metal analysis is uh, is used, I think, earlier. Is this RSA is what you propose or it is? It's, it exists elsewhere, but you are trying to adopt to this scenario. Excuse me. This metal type of analysis is well known, right, in another fields. Okay. But this RSA, you are proposing or you are taking from somewhere and trying to uh, analyze that in this scenario? Okay. So I, this uh, this uh, all the mathematical result here is, okay. is, is, is we, we do ourselves. And, and, this, and the definition of this RSA? Uh, the definition of RSA. The RSA is uh, very well known and well used okay. in not in wireless communication but in physics, oh, in so. material science, <coughs> in <coughs> biology, okay. everything else. Okay, so let's thank okay. the speaker. How much time did I? <laughs> <laughs> well, a little run, little uh, like three minutes out of time. Uh, so it's uh, how much in total, including uh, the question. Nah, including question. Oh, we are way late. So we are, we have done like. Uh, so including the the two wait. first question. <laughs> <laughs> so I good no like, like this. We are forty five minutes, including all the questions. Forty five. Uh, no. Yeah. Twenty five. 40, 37 minutes. <laughs> because I only have 22 including questions. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't read all the equations in slide number 17. <laughs> yeah. I guess. So I guess maybe this thing is uh, okay. Plain similar. Thank you. Uh, sorry, this black line is what we actually get by, by simulating it and actually looking at what the misflows are. And uh, you can tell it's an early talk because I'm just showing you the data as good or bad as it actually is here. Um, and here's the bound that we compute on the miss rate, and this is for file three, right? So we're looking at all of the flows in this network for file three. Um, and well, and, and actually, this blue, we just, this is the fixed point approximation. So it's just an approximation of the greens, uh, obviously, bound. Okay? So, what can I say about this? I've been thinking what to say about this. Um, you, you notice a couple of things. So, notice that at 2, 6, and 14, oops, let me go back here. So that's 2, 6, and 14. Remember, we're going to F3. So actually, you've got a lot of traffic that's trying to flow this way, right? And so clearly, you know, the miss rates are higher. So here, here, that's what those peaks correspond to. Um, you know, the bounds are pretty bad. You know, the bounds are, are not, uh, are, you know, are pretty far off from what we're actually seeing, uh, seeing in practice here. And then certainly, you know, as you get down here, we're doing a little bit better. And, in these inter in intervening ones, but these are these are results we're digesting, and um, uh, maybe I'd love to give a talk in another few months when we understand it better. I'd love to work with people here on this also because I think these, you know, the notion of these flows and, and, and bounding flows in cache networks is really interesting. Uh, okay, um, I, I, let me let me I'm going to skip over this. Uh, since I, I, I don't want to wear out my welcome being only here two weeks. Uh, it's too early for me to wear out my welcome. Uh, let, me, let me say simply that we've also looked at this problem, and, and this I have a paper on, not yet published, that I can send you, looking at, at the ergodicity of, of cache networks. And the question here is, uh, you know, you might think, I think we all have sort of these intuitive notions that, um, you know, steady state performance does often or very seldom depends on initial conditions, right? We always tell our students, oh, run it for a warm-up period and then start taking your measurements, right? And it turns out that with cache networks, you get some really strange behaviors. Let me, let me, I'll just draw you a picture. Well, maybe I won't. Uh, oh. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll just draw you a picture so you can, you can think about this. So, so here's, here's, here's a file B, and here's a file A, and, and here are two routers, and, and it's a really simple network, right? And here, all the requests, all the requests are for, are, are for A, and here all the requests are for B. Okay? And if I start as an initial condition, if I put one copy of A here, and the cache is of size one, it's like the simplest you can think about, and I put a B here, right? And I run my system, everything hits, right? I never miss at all. On the other hand, if I start off with things empty, it's actually impossible for me to even end up in this state that looks like that, right? So that just suggests that, I mean, it suggests to me anyway that um, initial conditions can play maybe a more significant role in cache networks than we're used to uh, used to thinking about. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, it was meant to be a little bit of an overview talk of, of, of a couple of different pieces of work looking at cache networks here. Um, breadcrumbs, which was remember really searching for content and using the soft state. Uh, that. I keep wanting to use Timur's term because um, I don't trust search. Um, and, right. right. and then looking at networks of caches, the fixed point approximation uh, and the network calculus. I didn't have time to talk about the ergodicity, but I do have something I'd be, I'd be happy to send you if you're, if you're interested in that particular piece of work. In terms of future work, um, uh, uh, so in terms of the cache network protocol, we were talking about this today, but um, you know, I think the notion of multi-path, uh, downloading from multiple custodians, is, it's obviously a really, it's, a, it's uh, never say obviously interesting. It's an interesting question. And to me, what makes it even more interesting is that, remember, when I, it, it has to do with, uh, maybe it was Daryl, somebody said, you know, the damage that you do. So when I make a request, I'm causing content to be downloaded everywhere, right, along the path. If now I'm thinking, oh, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help myself out and I'm going to route to two places, in a sense, I'm flushing out potentially twice as much or, well, on average twice as much, whatever. I'm flushing out a lot more content. And in the limit that I say, oh, there's a, there are n copies, I'll send a copy everywhere and I'll download it really quickly, I'm, you know, I'm putting the content that I want everywhere in the network. Clearly not a good thing. So um, it's clear that by doing multipath, you can do some harm, right? More harm than you might normally think because, because of this fact that when you make a request, you're causing a lot of, you're causing content to be stored multiple places. So, you know, uh, I think we're, we're used to thinking of, oh, two is always really good, and we have these power of two choices results. I'm wondering if that actually uh, applies here, uh, how to handle mobility uh, in the case of cache network protocols, uh, sort of, um, I, I, I don't know about that, although we had some discussion.